next agent framework that we're going to look at is Langgraph. Now Langgraph is a specialized framework within the Langchain ecosystem that focuses on building and managing stateful multi-agent applications using large language models, LLMs. Its key purpose is to orchestrate complex workflows where multiple agents can collaborate or work independently to achieve specific tasks. Unlike simpler agent frameworks, Langgraph allows for more control and flexibility, making it suitable for applications where agents need to manage complex decision-making processes, incorporate human feedback, or handle various domain-specific tasks. Some of the key features of Langgraph include cyclic and branching workflows. Langgraph supports loops and conditional paths, allowing agents to revisit previous states or adjust their behavior based on new data, making it ideal for complex problem solving or continuous tasks. Persistence and state management. It automatically saves the state of the agent's work, enabling features like error recovery, resuming tasks, and even time travel where you can edit past actions. Human in the loop. This feature allows agents to wait for human approval before proceeding, giving businesses control over critical decisions. Then we have integration with Langchain and LangSmith. While Langgraph operates independently, it integrates well with Langchain for LLM orchestration and LangSmith for performance monitoring. Streaming support. Langgraph supports streaming outputs, making it suitable for real-time interactions such as chatbot conversations or dynamic data processing. And finally, the multi-agent and hierarchical systems. It allows for creating teams of agents where each agent performs specific tasks or collaborates with others with some agents managing or supervising others. Let's look at LangCloud and example use case of LangGraph. The LangCloud is the complementary service that allows developers to deploy their LangGraph applications at scale. It supports features like asynchronous job handling, scheduled tasks, and deep monitoring capabilities, ensuring that these agents can operate in large-scale production environments without bottlenecks. Next, let's look at some of the example use cases. First, customer support automation. Langgraph can manage customer support tasks by employing multiple specialized agents. One agent might handle general queries, while others deal with specific tasks like troubleshooting or refund processing. Autonomous coding assistance. Replit uses Langgraph to develop coding agents that assist users by generating and debugging code. Langgraph ensures these agents work reliably in production environments. Complex workflow automation. Organizations like Norway Cruise Line use Langgraph to build guest-facing AI solutions that manage workflows, require dynamic, real-time decisions based on customer interactions. Let's jump into building an agent using Langgraph. The steps that will fall is here are first, we'll set up the environment. Step two is define the agent's tools and functions. Step three is create the agent logic. Step four, we'll build the graph. Step five, add persistence. Step six, invoke the agent. Step seven, extend with multi-agent or complex workflows. And step eight, is deploy. Let's get started. Step one, set up the environment. First, we need to install the necessary packages and configure our environment. So let's open terminal, let's increase the size. And here I'm gonna say, let's create an environment. I'm gonna go to my desktop and I will create a Python minus M V A N v virtual environment and i'll call it lang graph and then i'll activate this by saying source lang graph slash bin slash activate once i have that let's clear it out and let's install pip install lang graph and i need lang chain and i will also install openai 
So once this is done, I will also uh, make sure let me clear it export open AI underscore API underscore key equal to you add your open AI key here so I'll probably add mine here and then let's say my API key press enter so you should have if I if I say code dollar open AI Open AI underscore API underscore key, it should give me my API key that I've added. I'm going to change that and add my own, but make sure that you add your own open AI key here. Now that's step one. Let's clear it out. Now step two is to define the agent's tool and functions. That's what we mentioned. And for that, let's go ahead and um, so what happens is agents typically rely on tools, example, API calls, search functions. In this step, we'll define the tools uh, our agent will use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my sublime text and here I'm going to say from, uh, first let me save it as lang test.py and here I'm going to say from lang graph which I downloaded library dot graph I am going to import my state graph and message state or message state so that's those two things I will also need tools so I'm gonna say from lang chain underscore core that's where the tools are I'm going to say import tool next I need is a uh, tool node which is available in lang graph and it's a pre-built item so I'm going to say lang graph dot pre-built b-u-i-l-t import and I want to import as I said tool node so that's what I get from here and then from anthropic I'm going to open the get the chat anthropic so that is available in lang chain underscore anthropic so Pick. I am going to import chat and tropic model so that's that's kind of gets our basic libraries next we have to define a tool that simulates searching the web so I'm gonna just start with at the rate tool that's what I'm gonna call it I'm gonna say function search and this search function needs a parameter let's call it query type string and here this function is let's uh, here add some simulate a web search let's call that okay that's good <laughs> next I am going to say if let's for example weather in query dot convert into lower case then in this case return I will just say it is sunny and uh, else return no data available that's good so that's my tool definition now below it I'll say tools equal to search and tool node equal to tool node pass tools to it so that kind of defines a tool that simulates searching the web next next step is so this kind of completes our step two which is defining the agent's tools and functions next let's create the agent logic now you need to set up how your agent interacts with the environment this could include calling models and defining conditional logic for decision making so let's define the model the agent will use so I'm going to go back here and here I'm going to say model equal to the one that we down chat and tropic and model I will say equal to I will use Claude uh, and I think it goes like this Claude 3.5 so the version of the mod and sonnet is uh, 
I'm now so let's see let's look let me look at my 202 406 20 that's the one and then uh, I'm, I probably have to set temperature how hot I want it to be and I will say it's zero and uh, I'm gonna say bind this to uh, tools bind tools that's the function and pass tools to it so that that will define the model the agent will use now next thing is defining the function that calls the model so I am going to call it call model and it takes a parameter state which is message state and this function I am going to create a variable messages equal to state from state itself I will take the parameter messages and then response equal to model dot I will invoke based on these messages that's how you do it and then I'll return it I'll say return messages you kind of create a JSON and pass the response to it like that next thing is we need to do conditional function to decide whether to continue or stop the agent's workflow so that I'll create another function just make some space auto click auto added something so I'll say define should it continue and that takes the parameter state and that state is also message state and in here I will check if state uh, of let's say messages of minus one dot tool uh, underscore calls then I will say return tools else I'll say return end that's it so that will uh, kind of decide whether to continue or stop with the agent's workflow now once this is done this kind of continues our stops our step three which is create agent uh, save it create uh, the agent logic next is building the graph so now you we have to use lang graph to build a state graph for our agent connecting the nodes which are the task in the workflow so we'll have to create start with the workflow let's say our workflow equal to state graph come on state graph and it takes the message state that's how you define the workflow get the workflow from there now add nodes from the agent and tools for that what you'll have to do is in workflow I'll say add node so this is how you add nodes and call let's say agent is call model and to add workflow dot add node to add the tools will call the pass the tool node so that's how you add nodes and then finally we'll define the transitions between nodes to do that I'll say workflow dot add underscore edge that's how you start and give the command start with agent and then this is start with the agent and next one is workflow oops, I think dot add underscore conditional edges it depends so I'll say agent and should I continue so this will check if we need to continue and next one is add edge and this is for the tools so I'll say tools comma agent and this after using a tool go back to the agent so that's what I'm saying here so that kind of uh, completes our step four which is build the graph now add perspective now this is for add persistence sorry add persistence is optional you can add a memory saver uh, to ensure the agent state is uh, is kind of preserved between execution this is useful for long running task or task involving human interaction so for this you'll probably need another library I'll say from lang graph 
dot checkpoint that's what we'll use dot memory because that checkpoint is what has the memory library and I'm going to say import from this I'll import the memory saver so this is one of the uh, method that is available in there now I need to initialize the memory saver so I am going to do it let's put it here somewhere I'm going to say checkpoint tur equal to memory saver and then uh, so this is initializing the memory saver now we have to compile the graph into a runnable application we'll say app equal to workflow dot compile and pass the check pointer equal to check pointer so let's actually since we're taking workflow i'm going to go at the bottom here so this will make sure that uh, between executions it will save the save the states and uh, if it has more options it will probably make sure the states are saved so the next uh, step in this particular uh, building or lang graph is uh, invoking the agent now with the graph compiled you can now invoke the agent with a user query and observe how it responds so for that i need something from langchain core dot messages what i need is i need to import something called as human message now we need to start a conversation with the agent so i'm going to go at the bottom and i'm going to say final state equal to app dot invoke that's how you invoke this particular app and here inside this i'll say messages okay messages is human message content equal to uh, what is the let's say what is the weather today what is the weather today and then uh, once i have that i need a config which is i'll say configurable state equal to i'll say thread id i have to pass the thread id of some unique number i'll say one this unique thread id for state persistence that's what we are doing here we are making this configuration and finally let's print the final state in here and say messages of minus one dot content so that will print the response from the agent that's it that kind of covers our step six and now step seven uh, which is to extend the multi-agent or complex workflows now lang graph supports multiple agent designs allowing you to connect multiple agents in a hierarchical or collaborative manner you can further extend your graph to include multiple agents or integrate more complex conditional logic such as waiting for human input before proceeding with task anyway the additional features include uh, human in the loop where lang graph allows you to pause execution and request human approval for specific action before the agent continues also a state management where lang graph's persistence feature ensure you can pause and resume workflows making it uh, suitable for application requiring long running task or human collaboration and finally the step 8 is to deploy like for scaling lang graph cloud enables easy deployment of agents with features like task scheduling and monitoring with tools like lang graph studio you can debug and monitor your agents performance in real time so that kind of concludes our lang graph uh, framework where lang graph where we learned that lang graph provides a flexible and powerful framework for building ai agents with sophisticated workflows by following the steps above or whatever we did by following these steps you can create an agent that uses tools calls models handles decision dynamics and persist 
state across executions. Now, if you have any questions on this or you had any issues with this, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you.